Recently I designed a false feedback steering wheel using a electric power drill. I also made some pedals. In this video to finish off the ensemble I'm making a handbrake. Like the pedals in the steering wheel there's some pretty outrageously priced handbrakes you can buy on the market and this is probably the worst one because it is essentially a glorified switch. You might already be sorted for steering wheel and pedals with a Logitech solution or something like that. So this particular project is going to be based on the controller built into the pedal itself. So you can just plug it straight in and be independent of the steering wheel and pedals I've already made. The design of the handbrake is based on the pedals I made previously. Uh, so let's have a look at it. So here's the design I've come up with. If you've made the pedals before you recognize the bottom straight away it's actually identical. The only thing I've changed here is I've replaced the pedal itself with a shaft design with the handbrake handle at the top. The only other thing is down the bottom we've got a little case here to hold onto the micro. You can still plug this straight into the steering wheel like before if you wanted to but if I wanted this to run sort of independently so if you've already got a steering wheel and pedals you can still make this project and use it in your sim setup. The shaft itself is hollow and we'll go over that in a few more details later but for now let's print off these parts and see what we've got. So here's the additional parts if you've already printed the base of the pedals. This is the handbrake shaft and the handle which will slide on the top like that and these two halves that will hold the controller and more importantly this 8mm threaded rod. So when we pull the handbrake back at the moment we can see it sort of bows like a banana which is sort of ideal. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab some offcuts we used for the base and put it through the shaft and feed this all the way through to give it a bit more strength but before we do that we're going to give it a coat of paint and assemble it with the newly painted handle also and I think it looks like it's going to do the job for us. Next thing we do is we put the controller into the keeper it's got and that just goes in where the plug for the main controller used to be on the pedals. The sensor this goes in its regular holder giving it a first test with all assembled it managed to snap like a twig. And there's a good reason for that. If you're not all over the 3D printer jargon this is what we call infill so rather than print things solid we just infill it. So this saves us on time and materials but unfortunately makes parts a little bit weaker. So we can change it over to 100% infill and as you can see it takes twice as long to print and uses a little bit more filament but it is indeed a lot stronger. So I did that and made sure the thread went right to the bottom which I didn't do previously and as you can see the part is quite strong now I can't imagine this breaking too soon even for PLA it's, it's quite solid. Next thing we do is we just plug it into our PC and check that it's working. The sensor you can see there lights up with a red light and as I move the handbrake back it should dim. If it doesn't do it for you it means your magnet might be around the wrong way and just to adjust our sensitivity we just move this block back and forward. Once it's all done we need to program it and just a trick you need to set the board rate to 1200 on your X loader. Set your hardware and your firmware, click on upload, your computer will make a noise, there will be an extra port turn up, choose that port and then click upload and it'll upload the firmware. Now we're up and running, we'll use the tool developed by the developer and we move our handbrake back and forward and we should see the levels moving up and down. It's now time to try it in the race. So hurtling down the main straight here we just want to pull the handbrake up, the handbrake light comes on, the car spins around because the back wheels want to go forward. And there you go, a really simple project which does what it says on the box. If you want the STLs to make this pedal, check out the show notes below along with the link to the firmware you'll need to use with the controller. If you're a bit lost because this is the first video of mine you've seen, check out this one and then this one to get the full details. Otherwise, thanks for watching.